Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome also on my behalf. As you've heard this morning, we're living in a time of digital transformation, and it's happening across all industries and at an unprecedented rate. And in the midst of all this, I think the audience here can agree with me um, on the fact that it is becoming more difficult to generate growth in the marketplace if you're not able to implement technology the right way. And CEOs certainly don't want to miss up on the opportunities and fade into an irrelevance like what happened with Kodak a few years ago. So what's the key question for them? How do you find innovations that are not 10% better than the status quo, but are 10 times better? In order to do so, you have to be able to think differently. You have to be able to think differently about how you use technology to its core asset and as a source of innovation to meet user needs. Like we did, as Fried explained this morning, by bringing freedom of design to its highest degree. When we started individualizing every single in-ear hearing aid together with our partner Phonak. Not only making a great innovation happen, but also bringing 3D printing to the masses. So the good news is that we can reflect back on our own experiences and say and state that we can manage digital transformations in the right way. Of course, it takes leadership, tenacity, and resource mobilization to be able to do so. But we also find that materialize an intricate relationship between our technological capabilities and its interaction between the leadership capabilities of our partners to make digital transformations work. The interrelationship is managed through a process that we hold dear at the heart of our organization. It's called co-creation. The leadership capability of our partners is imperative because this is what allows us to tap into a vertical. It is the industry-specific market knowledge of our partners that allows us to use the digital as a source of meaningful innovation. And of course, our, our technological capability. We have a materialized backbone built upon 27 years of development on our core capabilities, which translate into several digital tools, which you will be hearing about during this summer, uh, summit, that enable all kinds of different applications of 3D printing across multiple industries. But it is only when these technical capabilities are matched with the leadership capability of our partners that an industry-specific vertical backbone can be born that has a true digital transformation impact. Today, we are very proud to present the first end-to-end digital supply chain enabled by the materialized backbone. Uniku combines most of our solutions, but links it up with the market-specific and industry-specific knowledge of Hoya to create a new category in the vision care sector, the first ever fully individualized eyewear. And as you can see, it is not about 3D printing alone. We have to think beyond together. And this can be managed with the right tools along a co-creation journey with our clients. And there are, according to me, four main topics to keep in mind that shape this co-creation journey as it unfolds. And if you're able to bring meaningful change to each of these four, 
what you have is transformative innovation. And I'm convinced that Uniku will have transformative impact because on product level, it brings a unique value proposition. The system enables visual experience, comfort, and style to be fully personalized to user needs. On the business model level, we're creating a new open digital platform, allowing users and producers to interact in a completely different way outside current va value chains. Potentially, this will do to eyewear what iTunes did to music. On the operational level, on-demand manufacturing will eliminate stock risks that the eyewear industry is faced with today. And it will reduce the waste to a very low level. But most important of all, it focuses on the human interaction. It will change forever the relationship between an optician and their customer and their customer with their eyewear. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to invite my friend Felix Espana to give you more valuable insight about this co-creation process and the results that we have achieved so far. Thank you. Hello, wonderful good morning, everyone. Are you having fun? So I promise you will have more in the coming minutes, in the coming hours. It's going to be great. Uh, let me please uh, first uh, thank uh, Materialize for this uh, kind invitation. It's really a honor for me to be in, in front of you. I remember two years ago when we were invited just to attend to, the, to this uh, global summit. I was really impressed, really impressed. And also really impressed to know that uh, 3D printing was not something happening uh, in the 21st century, it was happening in the last, in the previous century already, from 1990 when uh, Freda started all this crazy idea of 3D printing. Yeah, I, you know, I was just thinking when I was sitting there that both of us, we have a, uh, uh, let's see, a parallel life because we were involved in a life-changing experience project at the very uh, same moment in 1990. You were building your uh, dream on 3D printing and changing the world, and I was uh, preparing my wedding with my wife. So, <laughs> and, and, and still, you know, it's, it's work in progress and it's doing fine. So <laughs> that's what I want to say. Well, but anyway, let me tell you a little bit about uh, the project. And thank you so much, Ali Reza, for your kind uh, uh, presentation and introduction. So what is Hoya? First, so because most of you may not know what Hoya is. Hoya is a, is a big holding. We are a, one of the major uh, companies in the optical industry. We are market leaders in uh, countries like uh, Belgium, like uh, the Netherlands, Hungary, of course in our country of origin, Japan as well. And we have in our DNA uh, the innovation. So we are innovators in uh, personalized designs for lenses, we are innovators in coatings. We are the company that is providing the first uh, coating for plastic lenses that is giving the same scratch resistance to the lens as for a mineral lens, which is really a breakthrough in the industry. We were the first to introduce uh, online measuring systems, the first to introduce augmented reality to improve the uh, experience at the store. That was uh, back in 2012 and also innovators in materials. But further than that, and I'm keeping the best for last, we've been engaged with Materialize in be, been bringing this uh, innovation to the market uh, uh, last year. This is the first virtual reality headset that is giving the consumer the possibility to validate what their vision will be with different lens designs in a real environment. And we were co-creating this headset both together with Materialize. And, of course, some other systems like the one you see on the top right. It's called the iGenius, and this is a very fantastic system to measure your fixation disparity. 
basically this is a problem that you have with your binocular vision that can be fixed and can be measured with this kind of devices. So in our DNA, we have full set of solutions that represent our innovation that is brought since, you know, mid uh, 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 century to, uh, 2000, uh, yeah, 1990, I think it was in 1940 when the company was founded. And also we are innovators in the way of understanding what is the customer's journey, what is the experience at the store, because we truly believe that innovation should not be only on providing good solutions for the, uh, for the consumers, but also to provide a good experience in the store. And this is what we think is today what's happening in the stores when you are going to buy your glasses. So you have your prescription done, and then you select your frame, uh, the frame of your choice, and then we make some questions, where are you gonna use your glasses, for how long, etc. And then it's when the optician is selecting the lens for you, right? Just to make it a little bit bigger, so we are now in this step, the optician is selecting the best lens for you. And of course, there are some challenges. Not always the frame is providing the best position for your lenses meaning that we have to work on the design of the lens to make it the best possible for those circumstances. But then we came with a question, and then we challenged our R&D guys in Japan. And we said, what if we could create the ideal spectacles by putting the lenses in the optimal position and ensure the best visual performance? The best visual performance ever. And this should be based on your prescription, on your functional needs, on your previous experience, on your ergonomics and your anatomy, but not on your frame. And I can tell you that was a real challenge for us because we have been designing lenses for years and years and years, taking into account the position of the frame in front of your eyes. So the frame was driving that position. For the first time in history, we said, forget about the frame. Just think about the best visual performance ever for every single individual. This is where all started. And it all started around two years ago. That was a dream that started two years ago. All together, we started, you know, building this relationship and also bringing uh, and building this friendship. Because at the end, you know, when you're working together for two years, you develop also a, a, a very interesting friendship. Of course, our core creation is based on first identifying the product requirements, turn the requirements into concepts, and putting the concepts into testing. And putting all together, so your visual requirements, your functional requirements, the lens design that is coming, the software, the hardware, the frames, and everything together under a full digital platform. To count on this, we had Hoya, knowing quite well the optical industry, Materialize, you know Materialize so well, so we, I don't need to, uh, to explain that further, right? But also we needed someone to design the first frame collection. And of course, oh yeah, we are very experienced on lenses, but we are not experienced on the frame design. And we counted on a company with a very good reputation, Belgian by origin, that is called Hood. Mm. You can also see Hood downstairs, they are showing very, very tremendous designs on, on frames as well. And we were sharing all together the same focus, as you can see here down. We are here to improve people's life experience through innovation. That's why we could match perfectly to each other, because we are sharing the same focus. What makes Uniku unique? Of course, we are not talking about a frame-centric approach, where it's up to today more than 99.9% .9 of the glasses are sold that way, but taken from a different perspective, from a different angle, your vision-centric design. Second, the frame, of course, is produced by using 3D manufacturing, and this all is enabled by using a full digital platform 
and a high definition scanner. Maybe you want to have a look at this scanner. It's a little bit smaller than what you can see here uh, on the screen. It's a kind of two meters high. But if you want to experience it, and if you want to have a full experience on what the full process is, I would invite you during the coffee to go downstairs and enjoy it. And take your own scan, and you will see how you will look like with your new pair of glasses. Of course, at Hoya, we said, yeah, the most important thing is your visual performance, your visual experience. Here you can see a comparison between what, are your, what is your vision with the Uniku uh, approach, and what is your vision with the standard frame-centric approach? Of course, the difference is huge. But that should not be fair if I am not able to compare it to the best solution that is available today in the market. So let me go to the next slide and show you what is the comparison between Uniku on the left and the best possible product you can get on the market today. Hmm? The most personalized frame-centric lens. You see that still, Distortions, aberrations, blur, etc., in your binocular vision will be much better on the left side, on Uniku. So, we were able to make it. Of course, we have run several studies to make sure that this is done properly. Let me show you a small one, uh, just a few slides on, uh, on the test that we did. So, basically, we were doing a blind test comparing the best possible solution to the Uniku solution. Uh, our wearers were using those glasses for two weeks in a row, and they had to tell us what were the results. Here uh, you can see the, uh, the results on the frame comfort. In any of the elements that you can measure here, nose contact, temple length, distance to the cheeks. Basically, you know, distance to the cheeks is something really interesting. You know, you like smiling, do you? From time to time, right? I, I love it. You know, but what I don't really like is that when I'm smiling, my glasses are going up and down. This is something that we must take into account. When you're smiling, your glasses must be still comfortable on you. And as you can see there, the distance to the cheeks was much better compared to the normal solution. Distance to eyelashes, when you're blinking your eyes, you don't need your eyelashes to go against the lens. And also that was a lot better. No steam on temperature change, no sliding. So the results were really, really impressive. But of course, at Hoya, we are focused on your visual performance. And as you can see here, even though we were looking for improving the intermediate vision and improving the near vision, we also were impressed to see that even for the far vision, for objects that are you know, five meters away or more than 10 meters away from you, even on that part, the performance compared to the best product in the market was a lot better, not only for the most critical points on intermediate and near vision, but also on the far. And of course, when you were walking, we don't want you to feel like you're in a boat. So we were also measuring this level of effect. When you're moving your head, you need everything to stay in its place. And this also was improved compared to the best product in the market. With regards of production, yeah, we can say theoretically this is fantastic, but is Materialize able to produce the way, in a way that we can make sure that this is according to the specifications? Well, this is really impressive, especially for us. See that elements like vertex distance is really critical. How can you scan ahead and design a frame in front of the eyes and then produce it and make sure that the distance between the lenses and the eye remains the same with a very, very small range, which was considered by one millimeter. Meaning, if your lenses have to be 12 millimeters from your eyes, or 13 or 11, depending on the user, we give just a small range to be within it, which was less than one millimeter. And we nailed it. That's really great results. So basically, the wearers, they said, guys, you made it. You can go to the market with this, because this is really a breakthrough. What were the challenges that we also wanted to, uh, to fix, what we also wanted to approach? Today, in the optical industry, especially when you're producing acetate frames, uh, there's a lot of waste. Basically, more than 70% of the material that is used cannot be reused. We have to put it on the garbage. 
and we wanted to reduce this. And of course, if you go to an optical store, and I have a lot of experience also uh, working at optical uh, stores, we were never able to sell all the frames that we were purchasing to our suppliers. Most likely, and I can tell you, if you are able to still keep 10% of the frames that you are buying, you are a good optician. Because normally, that is one of the biggest challenges. You know, if you look at the numbers in Europe, uh, between 10 and 20% of the frames that the opticians buy, they are not able to sell them. And this is really a waste of resources, time, space, and etc. Yeah, and finally, as you can see on the right picture, you're keeping your frames there for long and long and long. And after three, four, five years, then you have to make a decision what to do with my frames that I'm not able to sell. Okay, maybe I will send them to Africa or somewhere else, but this is loose. And these are the great advantages that also this system is bringing. First, the freedom of design. You know, on the frame on the, on the top right that you can see, there is no technology except for 3D printing that can bring this kind of design to the market. If you like it, there is only one technology to make it, that is the 3D printing. Full customization, we can redesign the frame to be perfectly fitted to you. There is no waste. There is no stock risk because you are ordering the frame and in a few days you will get it in your store. Hmm? And quick time to market. You have a crazy idea? No problem. Design it, create it, and then we can bring it to market in a record time. You know, let's say that whenever the design is approved, it can be in 3,000 stores in 24 hours, available for every single consumer. Of course, we made this platform completely open, meaning that it, it's not only providing the base collection of the Hoya designs, but it's open to any well-known brand in the market to bring their designs to the platform, to enrich it, and to reach more consumers and more customers. There are basically unlimited opportunities. Today, we already have a couple of uh, brands that have joined the platform, and now we are in discussions to have much more to enrich it and to make it much wider. Benefits for consumers, just a, a short recap. Your comfort, your aesthetics, your vision will be improved to the limits, hmm? beyond the current limits. But also for the eye care professional, they can make a differentiated offer to their consumers. They can be seen as really specialist, quality of service, customer loyalty. At the end, a much better profitability. And also making sure that what they are offering is the best solution ever for every single individual. Let me finish with a, a quote that I didn't make, but with pleasure I would have signed it. That was made by Bill Gates. He's saying that the technology is just a tool. In terms of getting the kids working together and motivating them, the teacher is the most important. Uh, yeah, education is important. But I, let me rephrase that sentence and bring it to the market. Let me play here a small game and replacing the word kits by consumers working together by having an amazing shop experience and replacing the teacher with eye care professional. So the technology is just a tool. In terms of getting the consumers having an amazing shop experience and motivating them, the eye care professional is the most important. And this is also in part of our core business. We are here to support the eye care professional. We are here, Hoya is here to support the opticians. That's why we have created this platform together with Materialize in a way that it's a tool for them to improve their performance. It's not a standalone, it's not something that you will see in petrol stations or in airports tomorrow. It's something that has to be driven by eye care professionals to help them going one step beyond. Uh, I'm sorry for the delay, I think I'm taking a little bit longer, but let me show you something that was basically explaining everything that I have told you in two minutes. You are an individual. Thank you.
Not superior, not inferior, unique. Thank you so much. If you have questions, feel free. 